May the words of our mouths and the meditations of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to those of you who are mothers. Give thanks for those people, women and men, who have been mothers to us. And we give thanks to um, all of you for this wondrous day uh, where we're celebrating the entry into our new welcoming and accessible spaces. There are people at home with us on Zoom. And if you're new to us, the people who are reading, it, that's a way on Zoom, that's a way of us including our wider congregation in, in, in real participation in our worship service. So good morning to all of you. Stacy and I started a conversation earlier this week. We were reading through the scriptures together and wondering about the first reading from Acts. So I invite you to look at it. It's on page seven of your, of your bulletin. When we were talking about it, we began a really beautiful and interesting conversation. We thought we would share it with you and continue it with you. So the first thing that struck me about this reading from the book of Acts, which is the record of the early Christians, uh, the, they were called the people of the way at that time, uh, that were just forming all over that part of the world. This, uh, and this makes reference to a woman, and it says, now in Joppa, that's modern day Tel Aviv, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, a disciple. So we're naming here a woman as a disciple, which is unusual in and of itself. Um, but it, it goes on to say that she was also known to some as Dorcas. So remember that there, there are Jews and Greeks, Gentiles, all coming together to become form, forming this new Christian community. So she, Tabitha was a disciple um, and she was known to some as Tabitha and some as Dorcas. We read on and it says that she, she uh, was continually doing good works and giving alms. So this gives us a sense that she was a woman of wealth, able on her own to give alms. But here's what's interesting. We read later through the story where she dies and then she's given new life by Peter. And all... Who is gathered around her in this community? It's the widows. The, the reason that the early church, the Christian movement, the way, was so threatening to the Roman government is because it was disrupting the order. Um, Paul says in, in Christ there is no Jew nor Greek. There is no slave or free. There is no male or female. Outrageous claims in that time. Um, and, and, and yet here is this woman, Tabitha, who is honored and, and really has the position of deacon, a deaconess, even if she is not named as such, not because of her family affiliations or because of her wealth, but because of her service. And we know that she is not just giving anonymously to people that she doesn't see or know. She's giving to people who love her, a network of women who she is in relationship with. And we know this because when Peter raises her to new life, there are the widows saying, here is this tunic that Tabitha made for me. Here is this tunic that Tabitha made for me and for us. And, and we can see this upper room filled with women. And this began a story of us sharing with one another uh, women in our lives and men in our lives who have uh, done these extraordinary things that disrupt the order maybe of how things are, are laid out in our society, but yet who are there and who are in relationship in extraordinary ways. And, and, this, and then Stacy unfolded this beautiful story to me. So how many of you remember the show, The Waltons? Yeah. Uh, I loved that show because it was about a, a small town where people came together when there was a need or even when there was somebody who was considered an outside, this Walton family would kind of find a way to embrace them. And I had a coworker one time who said to me, I don't like that Waltons. And I'm like, why not? And she said, I just don't believe in that stuff. I don't think anybody acts like that. And I said, yes, they do. Let me tell you a story. 
So my father grew up in the small town of Ypsilanti. It was much smaller back when he was, was young. His mother died when he was eight and she left behind uh, two sons, my dad and his brother and, and my two aunts uh, who were much younger. So now we've got a father who's going to be raising these four children on their own. And it was at a time when you felt that girls should be raised with a mother in the house. And even though he had a female housekeeper, that wasn't enough. And so they would have been put in an orphanage. And what happened was that a, a couple families in his church, Methodist, I might say, uh, decided to take the two girls in so that in some way in that community, the family could stay together. So my aunt went to the Green Streets, who are still a real, uh, realtor firm in Ypsilanti. And my younger uh, aunt went to a, a family called the Waltons. Um, who I grew up knowing because they became a part of our family. And they had a little grocery store in Ypsilanti that was there for a long time. Um, but just, and then when my grandfather was remarried, then the girls were able to go back into the family. But it was a way for the neighborhood to help a family stay together in a time of need. And I, as she told me this beautiful and touching story, I thought, you know, I don't, I don't know that I have a story in my family like that. And then I thought, yes, I do. So just a few years before my dad died, he told me this story um, that my great grandmother, who I never met or if I met her, I, don't, I, I didn't spend a lot of time with her, but her name was Ma White. And um, she was, her mother died when she was very young. And then her stepmother was very abusive to her. And at a, about age 15, the story goes that she walked out onto a dirt road in East Texas and she saw a traveling salesman coming toward her in a wagon board, you know, horse and, and a wagon thing. And he said, she said to him, will you marry me and take me out of here? And he did. And it's a risky thing for both of them, right? But they, but they began this life together. And my dad told me all these years later that out of her experience of being found after being lost, of being restored after being abused, that she would take in women, sometimes very young women, sometimes with, with children out of wedlock, some out of who were coming out of the abusive families. Before there were safe havens called domestic violence shelters, before there was a foster care system, she would take these young women one at a time into her home and call them her own, call them her daughters, call them her sisters. And um, it just, it struck me as there have been, there have been women and men throughout history who do these acts of, of extraordinary Christ-like behavior, and, and we give thanks for them today. And I wonder, you know, the question I ask to you is, okay, so where is Christ in this story? But I have to remind her again, what she told oh. me at the end of her story is that her great-grandmother at one time said that she had a blessed life full of sisters, and somebody said, what do you mean? Where, where are your sisters? And she brought up all of these women that she had brought into her life, much like Tabitha had in her life. So for me, um, the story is about our taking on Christ, because Christ has ascended into heaven and has left us with this work. We look at the story of Peter healing Tabitha, and it is in such parallel to the story, I believe in Matthew, of Jesus healing Jairus's daughter. And he says to the little girl as she's laying in bed, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. Mm -hmm. And Peter was in the room at that time. So Peter repeats what he learned in this story that we have of Joppa today. He says, Tabitha, get up. 
it up. And that's kind of what our stories and the stories I'll bet that you all have of yourselves or in, the, in your families about the way that we raise people up, the way that we lift them up. And I, I wanna say that, you know, I know that we have people in our congregation who say, I, who feel like they're not doing enough. And I wanna tell you, you're probably doing a lot more than you think you are. Because you're a part of this community, you have Christ in you. We are the Peters, we are the Tabithas, we are the widows. We are all of that. And this is, as I said last Sunday, Acts 30. Remember this book ends at chapter 29. We are Acts 30, we are continuing the story. It may not be written down in our lives and added to scripture, but it is being written and it's being taken note of by God, by Christ. So God bless you as you continue in your own lives to repeat the great stories that we have in our families and to continue the work that you all do to make this world a better place. Amen. Amen.